or not to you this one. All right. So phenomena-based instruction, what is it really? I think that's been the question for a lot of us is like, what? Yeah, I hear this, but I don't really know what it is. So we are going to, I already hit record. I'm going to skip the norms, but today we'll be really looking at the MTSS. So these is a, our information is aligned to the core. And also if you're using the, um, the new seat standards, you're really adding rigor to your instruction as well. So here's the learning intention. I'll just let you look over that. And then the success criteria, if you can really use these five E's that I'll show you today, and if you're able to use the um, instructional materials that were written by instructional supports, you'll be doing the five E's and then your students will be investigating. So once the curriculum, since the curriculum is written, it actually won't be too hard. So at the very beginning, I asked you about that phenomena, like it was something you've seen. Is there something you've thought about lately in science? You're like, how is that happening? Like, how is that working? I'll we share just, yeah, Go ahead. We just went to the aquarium just today for a field trip. Oh, yeah. And just looking at just the ecosystem and how the animals interact and thrive together, that just kind of makes me think the, the wonder, the why. Yeah, see that would that would be an, a science, a phenomena based, a phenomena based um, component. So you could use that for like going back to your students and say, how do, how do you think that? So your students would maybe show a little bit. You could show a little video, and your students could ask questions about it, and see what they notice and what they wonder. One big thing for me, a scientific phenomenon I've noticed is, and I'm missing out on it, but the the northern lights. Have you seen all those pictures about the northern lights and people are posting them online and they're seeing them even as far south as Utah. So that's mm -hmm. a scientific phenomena because it's an, um, an observable event that I could see that occurs in the universe. So it always happens, but why is it happening? So that's what a phenomena is. Scientific phenomena is something that happens that you can observe. So if you are thinking about science phenomena-based instruction, you, you would really shift the instruction from the students learning like a student rather they're figuring out like a scientist. So why are the animals interacting at the um, aquarium in this way? And that's something we'd figure out. So it's really more focused on the students gaining the knowledge rather than you being the presenter of the knowledge. So if we go back to the phenomena-based instruction, when these new standards came out in 2012 from NGSS, and we adopted a little bit later in Utah, but the science instruction has really three with phenomena-based, you have three different components. First, you have the um, science engineering practices. And I have to refer it back to math because we have a math practices, and that is how do the scientists behave? What do we do? What practices do we do if we're acting like scientists? Those are the science and engineering practices, which really mimics the math. And then the second part of the new standard, the three-dimensional standards is are the cross-cutting concepts. So that's how we think. And that's carrying um, domains. Or it goes across all scientific domains. So cause and effect, it might be systems, it might be functions, but those are um, concepts that go across all sciences, whether you're in a first grade um, class is talking about living systems, or you're in a high school class talking about physics. And then the last is what we've always thought of as the science standards, and those are the disciplinary core ideas. So what do we learn? So it's not just like it was, and teacher, I remember in science that she just fed me information, although what do I learn? And she was just telling me, but now we think about how do we help students think like scientists? How do we get those um, ideas that are going to cross a cut, cut across all of our sciences for them, K-12? And then what it, what are we teaching them? So those are the three dimensions, and that's what would be included in a in the science in the phenomena based instruction. So this is off a little. Let me go. So these five words I don't know why they're off the screen, but um, this is the cycle five e learning cycle. It's really an inquiry approach to science. So first you'd start with engagement. That says engagement up there. And that's the phenomena. So maybe I show a picture or I show a video and I ask the questions, what, what questions are the students? What questions do you have? It's like, if we're at the aquarium, we come back tomorrow. What questions did you have about how they were interacting? And so they'll come up with questions. Maybe they wonder some things. So there's three questions you can always ask. What do you notice? What do you wonder? And then what are some questions? Because you're going to be the scientist here. What questions do you want to answer? And then you explore, um, it might be a hands-on lab. It might be something that you, you're doing. The students are coming up with their own. You give some explanation. And really that explanation is where the teacher would elaborate. That's where the explicit instruction comes in. So we've shown the phenomena. Then we've let them explore a little bit. And now during the explanations, when I, the teacher, clarify, I might teach the vocabulary then. That's my explicit time. 
And then we may do another activity to add on to our information. We might add another lab in there or we might have another reading. So, and then finally we evaluate. So let me show you what that looks like in a cyclical piece. So we begin with the phenomena and then we have all these learning experiences. We might be exploring, we might be explaining, we might be expanding. We just keep doing that until we feel like they're ready to explain the phenomena. And then we wrap up with a, with a um, evaluation. So what questions do you have about that cycle right there? If any, I not I don't have any right now. Okay. So I love this is actually in the map in the science con, um, section. These are talk moves to help support. So while you're in the five E's, if you're wondering what to like ask when you're in, when they're engaging, um, that's those are talk moves that you can use. So those are sentence frames. There's questions. So I want to refer to that because you can always go back to it in the map. I guess sometimes the hardest thing is. Okay, I'm supposed to be doing this, but what does it look like? What as a teacher? So these are some of the moves that you could use when you're starting the phenomena-based instruction. And then I wanted to show this before we go into the curriculum, but um, this is called the CER, and it is a way of assessing. It's a claim, so students make a claim about something that's occurred, and they could make that claim at the beginning, maybe, and then they could after they explore, they might change their claim. But when you assess, you'll want them to have some type of claim. They'll need some evidence to support maybe some data they've collected, some observations they've made, and then a reason. So they connect that back to the claim with the evidence. They kind of justify their reasoning. So if you look at the example there, the moon phases. So the claim might be there's different phases of the moon and they appear each, you know, that appear each night. And they might have gathered evidence over the cycle of a moon of what happens each night. So they can make a reasoning, show the reason why it happens. So claim, evidence, reason. And Leslie really builds that in with your instructional materials as well. So, and here in the map, the page I've shown you so far are in the map, but this is a rubric and then some sentence stems. Because sometimes science isn't successful if we don't give this or anything, if you don't start the sentence frame. So you could use these in your um, instructions. So I really like the claim evidence reasoning. Students will make a statement. So you could just put, I noticed that blah, dot, dot, or my claim is. So these sentence frames could really help them. Any questions on the rubric or the, any of the claim no. I've been using? Okay. Mm -mm. And I love this connects back to wiser because that was the biggest thing when we got the new curriculum three, five is teachers like it's too much reading. It's too much writing. But if you think about what a science scientist does, he doesn't just go do a bunch of experiments. He might, he finds something he's curious about he or she should say, and then they do experiments and then they read about something. They might watch a video, they read some more. So we really need to make sure that the students are doing that reading and writing and viewing is all included. So if I'm thinking about this power of wiser, the inquiry piece, that's my phenomena. Mm -hmm. I present something exciting. So students are like, Hey, why is that happening? Or how, how did that work? Then we do some reading. We might watch a little video about it. We're going to talk about it a lot. And then in the end, we come back to writing. So really this is that this is wiser instruction using the phenomena-based instruction. All right, let's go into your curriculum specifically. So this is the, um, just so you know, three, five, I'm zip through this. If you'll notice at the top, it has engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So the three fives curriculum is set up perfectly to match the five E's of phenomena-based instruction. So I'll zip, there's their, so this is just a um, video that you can watch, that they have them watch down here, any kind of the phenomena. It has a video and then the, the, instructions are, what do you notice? What do you think, what questions do you have? So teacher's not doing any instruction now, it's getting the kids excited and thinking like scientists. So then they would go into the explore piece and they would do a little lab, inquiry lab about um, motion. And then this is explains the teacher piece. So we're now we're in the teacher explicit instruction. She would do some vocabulary, explicit vocabulary on position, distance, direction, whichever they feel like her students might need. And then we do some more explaining, we do some reading. So all the literacy components you'll see in here. And then we may elaborate because they need some more work. So we might do another science experiment with elaborate and then finally they evaluate. So this is set up a lot like your, like the McGraw-Hill is obviously because they actually summarize just like you do in the reading and writing companion. So let's look at your curriculum though. So this is a sample of a sixth grade unit. This is, um, you do change in a matter of second grade. I post second grade when I think this is second grade. So this is what the, the teacher presentation looks like. And I just pulled some pieces out, but I'll show you how to get into there. So this is changed in matter. This is my teacher presentation. 
So it gives you an overview of what standards you are teaching. Now, one thing to note in the standards is there were, they always have the three things. So develop and use a model. That's the um, science and engineering practices. That's what the scientists would do if they're doing. And describe an object made, made of a small piece. Can a disassemble and reshape new object? Function is your cross-cutting concept. So that's what is going functions go from K to 12. So you develop a model like a scientist, the function is that cross-cutting concept, and you're describing an object, how it can be disassembled and reassembled is the core concept. So it always includes all three of the, mm -hmm. um, the pieces in the standard. So then you get into your engage. So here's one sample of what you're, um, hang on a second. I have a colleague here with their nose in the window trying to be hilarious. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a phenomenon. So here, here are some things made of different materials, but they all have different functions. What, what questions or wonder, what wonders do you have? So what do you think a student might say if you said, what questions or what do you notice? What do you notice? What do you think a student might notice from this phenomena? Well, I wonder what is holding up the bridge in the top picture. I was wondering that as well, because those look like a lot of thin things. I wonder if um, the brick houses have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. I also and wonder, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and I would assume a student might say that bottom picture looks like a room in my house. Okay, yeah. And I wonder if it matters if that brick gets hot, if it does anything to it, because it looks like it's in a fireplace. Mm -hmm. So the students come up with all the questions, the things they wonder, and then and then we move them through and engage. So all these things are made up of the same material. This is a student page right here. Um, a question I have. So as you're as you're presenting the phenomena here, and the students do some writing, a question I have, of course, they talk about it. You talk about your colleague or your friends, and then they write in their little notebooks. So this is a teacher, or excuse me, the student piece connected to the teacher piece. So these are mm -hmm. all done for you. So that's our engage. And then we go into our next E, which is explore. So in this activity, they would form three teams. Um, there's supplies that have come, come, come pick up your supply kit. Each team is going to make a, something out of the kit. So they would work with their team to do some exploring. And then they'll do a gallery walk. And I love that all everything that's written in here is also these are these are questions that scientists might need to answer if they were scientists, but it also gives your students opportunities to talk. So on their gallery walk, they go check out everything that the students, other st the students have made and they draw it in their sketchbook. I don't think I made a picture of that. So they'll explore and then we go into the vocabulary, which is your explain. So the explicit vocabulary is actually right in the lessons as well hmm. that she wrote. And then here's while, you, while you're doing the explicit instruction, the students write in their notebook, okay, what was the definition? What explained? What's an example and not example? And then they do some reading about it. So we read together these functions and structures. This is page nine and 10, the notebook. And this is right inside your teacher presentation. And then you discuss and some things you learned. So it follows exactly the five E's. And remember the place that you're doing the most instructions in the explain, you'll get the phenomena, you let them explore a little bit, and then you go into some explicit instruction. You might elaborate with another exploration, or you might go straight to the evaluate. So how can these all be made of the same material, but have a different function? Like they're all brick. So hopefully at that point, your students will have an opinion. So that would be your claim and then give some reasons using the sentence stems below and a word bank. So that's a good scaffold for them. Mm -hmm. So what are you thinking about? How is this different than maybe the way you learn science or the way you've been teaching it? I think uh, it's structured in a very nice way because I'm guessing this is the structure for most, if not all of the lessons. Having Every that, one. yeah. And I think more of what, how I was taught or at least how uh, it's been presented before. It was kind of depending on what the lesson was, was how it was directed towards us. So I think the structure will lend itself well to some uh, routines that will benefit. Yeah, I think so too. And it makes the, I think it removes the teacher as the giver of all knowledge. Instead of being like a student, you're actually, you want them to engage as, as if they were scientists. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up the instructional guide here and show you exactly where to find them. And then you can Excellent. follow with me. Okay. I just went to manuals. 
Doc, can you see my screen as manuals? Mm -hmm. I just said manuals. I know there is other ways to get there, but manuals.canyonsdistrict.org will get you here. And then I believe I had to click on instructional manuals and then uh, let me know if you get where I am to second grade. All right, are you, do you need more time? Are you okay with where we are? Well, since I'm looking at your screen, I can't okay. really get into my own. So I'll just continue looking at yours, but I know how to get here. Okay, good. So we're going to we go into the science information. Mm -hmm. And then let me make this bigger. Um, and from there, all, most of the stuff, like here's that three-dimensional page reminding you the three the uh, three dimensions of the new science, the inquiry based, if you need a reminder on that. There's the talk moves. And I'm going to slip back here to the very the CER. And so what we have here are the seed resources. So the second grade lesson plans are right here. They feel like they're hidden a bit. Let me get a little bigger. I feel like they're hidden, but... Once you find them, you'll never forget. So I'm on the second grade lesson plans and it opens to a new screen that has all the lesson plans. Gotcha. Oh, so let's say the, um, let's try a different one because we did change it. Let's do living things. So the first of the year next year. So I'm going to open the teacher presentation and it literally just walks you through. So it gives you the beginning. Here's the standards you'll be working on, what materials you might need. One great thing about the materials, we tried to get materials that were easy to get, you know, easy to get twist ties, scissors, glue, tape that were, you probably already have somewhere. And then here's the phenomenon. Why do these seeds have spikes on them? You can, that's the question. Maybe they have different questions. What do you notice? What do you wonder? And then it just goes through to explain. You just, you read page four, explain it. Here's some exploring with seeds, more exploring. So every lesson is already written out for you. Here's a little video that goes along. Let's see what this video is. Some plants have seeds that explode from a... Violet flower seeds are crammed into a special pod. So some have videos as well. So it's all written out for you. And then let me show you the student book, what it looks like that goes along with that. So here's the student resource. You just print this off and I think the seeds have spikes because the students would talk about it and then... And right, and here's your little read page from ReadWorks and all of the different ways a seed moves because those are the four pictures that you may have seen. Draw a picture showing the way the wind moves, that the animal poop moves, that it's hooked on animal explosion. So it's all done for you, Sarah. You just print these off and you can just go for it. So is it something we print? Is it something we can order? What, because I know you mentioned printing it off, which I think is great, but is it something great. that teachers can order for a grade? So this year we have printed it because it was the first year we did print them for them. But I think next year we'll probably put them in the um, TRC, Teacher Resource Center. And then you'll, you can order from there or just print off yourself. This one is, sorry, let me click. This is 15 pages for the students. And then your teacher presentation, you just present it. So we will have them in TRC for now. Um, you would just print them if you wanted to try one this year, see how it goes. Gotcha. So. Um, yeah, but just go back, going back to that, it's, I feel like they're a little bit hidden maybe, but in your, once you get to the year at a glance, they're right there in the lesson plans. Mm -hmm. So, but I think it's one easy way to get through your standards and really have that phenomena based approach. Yeah. So any other questions you have or wonders about, um, the science, uh, either phenomena based instruction or the actual lessons? Nope, not really. It's just more the time trying yeah. to make sure I have it structured and planned out to get everything in everything that I'm trying to accomplish in wonders at 95% plus the math and then have this be a structured supported time. Right, right. Well, next year you're thinking, at least you know where these are now. And so next mm -hmm. year you can kind of glance at them. I believe the minutes, I'm going to back up. I think the minutes are right here that we would have, I think it's a hundred or 90 minutes a week or per unit is what they expect. I mean, it might take, so we're going to have that, but that should help you a little bit that it doesn't, doesn't take a ton of time. Maybe just pick yeah. what you, what you like, but yeah, try one out next year and see. It's not really mm -hmm. how to get into the phenomena based instruction because it's kind of built for you. But I yeah. think, the, I think the thing to remember with phenomena based is, um, go back to my 
the thing to remember is that we, the, the students are the, like they're, they want, we want them to be the scientists. We're not the facility. We're not the giver of all information. Mm-hmm. But we want them to be doing the learning and the thinking. So, all right. One last question. How do you plan to adjust your science instruction from what you've learned for this year or next year even? Well, I really like the idea of having the slides. I know when we were doing phonics before we got 95%, uh, I put ECRI on uh, Google Slides so that we could keep on pace and that we had them there and I could run through them. And I think having that access, that slide deck uh, for the different ones can give me easier time to kind of see what I'm looking at, kind of prepare certain things, but also keep us uh, really focused on what, what the goal is. Nice, nice. And hopefully by doing that, because that is a great idea, hopefully you can um, make sure you have those five E's and having mm-hmm. the students being the scientists with that as well. Well, you're awesome. Thanks for joining. And it was kind of fun just to hang out with you and I. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for focusing on second grade. It, it was very beneficial to me. Good, good. Well, you have a good time and um, thanks for joining. Definitely. Thank you. Okay, have a good evening. See you, Sarah. You too. Bye. Mm-hmm.